My name is Sharul Nizam Bitzabri. My metric number is AA180678. Hi, my name is Abdul Hadi Islam Bizamri. Hello, my name is Saeed Mohamed Bakay Min Allah, AA180985. Alright, now I will talk to you about the type of automation involved. Uh, as we know, we have three types of automation, which is uh, feed automation, programmable automation, and also flexible automation. Uh, for feed automation, uh, it, is a, it is a system that involves in feed sequence or processing by the equipment configuration. It is usually used when the volume of production is very high and have a very little waste in production. In the video, feed automation is used in the process of producing from the polypropylene plastic material. It is also in producing the packaging for the washing and cleaning product that use a HDPE, high density poly polyethylene, and also a PET, polyethylene triphylene plastic. Alright, second is programmable automation. Programmable automation is a use to accommodate specific class of product change and the processing or the ability to modify the control program to change the assembly operation. Alright, having the ability to use certain program to instruct the machine, the programmable automation is used in the sorting part of the shredded HDPE. It is sorted by color and using LED to recognize them. Then, the data will send to the program and the color shredded HDPE will blown out by the air. Alright, lastly, flexible automation. Flexible automation function as to process different product configuration at the same time on the, the, on the same manufacturing system. The system can be seen in production of the packaging of for washing and cleaning product. It is used in small batch as it is a new way to recycle the used plastic. The granulated HDPE will be made then will be formed into bottle under air pressure. The small scale production to a better way recycling require high cost as it needed more equipment and machine. Okay, first of all, I will explain about the process from yellow bin until finished product. Um, first, is that the waste are collected from different regions and placed inside the yellow bin. In the yellow bin, there are different types of plastics are found. Some of them are waste which can be recycled for use. Next, the bottles that made of different types are found in yellow bin also. It will be sorted according to their types. There are three types of plastics are found. Uh, for example, is that the HDPE, high density polyethylene, PET, polyethylene terephthalate, and PP, polypropylene. And uh, after that, the waste that is collected from the yellow bin is, is to be put in a sorting plant. There are 2.5 million packaging waste ends up in the yellow bin, and most of them. Uh, being used for energy recovery uh, 120 tons of waste are gathered in the sorting pan in the large hall of the machine the waste of flows runs on conveyor belt for over two and a half kilometer then it ha it happens the first stage the merit the material falls into a large rotary rotary sieve Different packaging materials and other materials are sorted according to size. Smaller pieces will fall into the hole. The remainder will be transported to two more dams. Next, the five separated streams are created containing different size of material. By separating the material by size, it will make the sorting procedures much more easier. Next, in a special air separator, it blows out a material that is lighter, such as a foil, out of the stream. The air separator and other machines removes most of the foil out of the stream. Next, the infrared scanner will scan the types of plastic during the process. For example, as soon as the infrared scans the presence of PP bottle gaps, 
PET or PP plastics that will be shoot out of the stream by the air pressure. After that, the material that is already well sorted will be gathered manually by hand, given the automated process of sorting out. Then, staying on belt will be the most effective plastics only and pressing the kind of plastics into belts. Useful plastics such as HDPE will be used to make pies or specialized pellets. PP plastic will be used to make flower pots or buckets and PET plastics will be converted into fibers used in flare sweaters or finishing. Then the next process happen. The HDPE bottles appear in a shredder and a special procedure sorts out the last unwanted remains. It results a mixture of colorful clean flakes. Then a special mechanic mechanics allow the machine to isolate single flakes from a large mass. HDPE particle run over the slide with 10,000 pieces per minute. It shoots out the unwanted color of the HDPE particles. The machine process is carried out over the first two slides and repeated on the next two and finally the final repetition on the last slide. This machine has five repetition slides. Then the materials are melted at 220 degrees of Celsius in an extruder. The melt is pressed through a filter and purified once again. After that, the liquefied plastic is cooled and processed into granules, resulting a high quality raw material that can be put nearly everywhere in the plastic industry. After that, the HDPE granulate from ice valve is fed into a machine. Then, it is melted in a special extruder to form the bottles under air pressure. The excess materials is trimmed off and the bottles are ready. Next, the HDPE, the HDPE bottles are filled up and delivered to the shops. Not only the HDPE bottles that are made of the of recyclable materials, but the, also the PP caps. And once again, the ice valve will do its job for the PP caps. For PET granulate, the the PET granulate from the yellow beans is mixed with PET granulate from deposit system. The free forms from the first production stage are blown into bottles and later filled. It is made from 20% PET plastic from yellow bean and 80% plastics from deposit system. This process means that the HDPE bottle is made from another HD bottle and so does the PP cap is made from PP cap and also the PET bottle is made from another PET bottle. That's all. I want to present the conclusion of recycling plastic process. Recycling is critical to effective end-to-end -end life management. Increasing recycling rates have resulted from greater public awareness and the increased effectiveness of recycling operation. Operational efficiency will be supported by ongoing investment in research and development. Cycling of the greater range of post-consumer plastic products and packaging will further boost recycling and divert more end-to-end -end life plastic waste from landfills. In industry and policymakers can also help stimulate recycling activity by acquiring or incentivizing the use of recycled waste versus virgin plastic. Plastic Recycling Industry Association are the bodies responsible for promoting plastic recycling, enabling members to build the maintain relationship among plastic recyclers, and lobbying with the government and other organizations to help create the best possible environment. With the responsibility by the association, with the responsibility by the association to handle the plastic crisis that never end effectively and change the future of the plastic products in the whole world. The 
consumers also the one who have the power to change the world crisis of plastic waste petroleum based plastic are among the biggest offenders in terms of waste pollution with many plastic materials being completely unrecyclable and taking thousands of years to break down the environment consumers must become the driving force behind who self change in both the type of material we choose to consume and the way which we use them the popular move away from single use water bottle is a good example of how people power can make change for the upstream however so to its new right to repair movement that is gaining traction in various countries in other hand the production capacity is set to increase the food future and the procedures is to be further improved plastic recycling industry plan to enter areas related to more industries which never had done before and looking forward to the food industry and cosmetic cosmetic as well